All right, let's have a look at these five IB questions on sets and uh, Venn diagrams. So, uh, number one, the universal set U is defined as the set of positive integers less than 10. I'm uh, just going to write out what my uh, positive integers less than 10 are. Um, right now, I just can't find uh, where my editing pen is, so uh, where's it gone? Review. Oh, there we go. Okay. And uh, I want my pen. Um, Alright, let's hope it's uh, ready to go. So, U is going to be equal to the set of all positive integers. So the smallest positive integer is 1, and they have to be less than 10. So we can only go up to 9. Uh, Alright, it continues and says the subsets A and B. So this must mean that the numbers in the sets A and B are entirely contained within our universal set U. So A says that it is the integers that are multiples of 3. So remember, we're only considering the numbers inside our universal set. Which ones, as we build our subset, which of these elements in U qualifies to be in set A, an integer that is a multiple of 3? Well, 3 is a multiple of 3, 6 is a multiple of 3, and 9 is a multiple of 3. So there, there's the, uh, that's our answer to part AI. We've got the set 3, 6, and 9. And then set B says that we're looking for the integers that are factors of 30. A factor is a number which divides in perfectly. So which of these numbers inside the universal set U that we're considering in this problem, which of these numbers can divide perfectly into 30 with no remainder? Well, 30 divided by 1 that works perfectly, so 1 must be a factor of 30. Another way of thinking about this is 1 times what equals 30? Oh, 1 times 30 equals 30, so therefore 1 is a factor. 2 is a factor because we can do 2 times 15. 3 is a factor because we can do 3 times 10. Now 4, is there anything that multiplies 4 to give 30? No, there isn't, right? So 4 is not a factor. What about 5? Does 5 go into 30 evenly? Yes, it does. It goes in exactly 6 times. 6 goes in perfectly 5 times. So 6 must be a, another factor. 7 is not a factor of 30, because 30 divided by 7 doesn't give you a perfect integer. Similarly, 30 divided by 8 or 30 divided by 9, there's nothing that multiplies 8 or 9 to give you 30. And so we've got five factors inside our universal set, five factors of 30. And let's just write the set again over here. 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Okay, so we've done part A. We've listed the elements of set A and set B and they're both subsets of the universal set. Now we need to place the elements of sets A and B in the appropriate region in the Venn diagram below. So we've got set A, 3, 6, and 9. So I've got to put a 3, a 6, and a 9 into circle A. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. I've got to put a 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 into circle B. Now you might notice that 3 and 6 belong to both sets, A and B. So I need to write my 3 and my 6 into this region to demonstrate that those elements belong to set A and they belong to set B at the same time. There's only one number left in set A, that's 9. And it doesn't belong to set B, so let's put it in this region. And in this region over here, we're talking about the numbers that are inside set B, but are not in set A. And so we've already used the 3 and the 6. We must be left with the 1, the 2, and the 5. There we go. And I'm not actually finished. Because you'll remember that the uh, universal set... Oh, uh, well actually, maybe that's all I need to do. I would probably be a bit safer here. 
And remember that my universal set is actually dealing with all numbers, 1 through 9. So there are some numbers that we have here which do not belong to set A or set B. So far I've used 1, 2, 3, where's my 4? I haven't used it yet because it doesn't belong to A or B. So I would put my 4 out here. It's inside my universal set, but it's not inside set A or set B. All right, five we've already used, six we've used. We haven't used seven yet, so let's put seven somewhere outside A and B. And nine is here, but eight we have not used, so I put eight somewhere out here. And that, to me, is a complete diagram of all of our nine numbers from the universal set while demonstrating which numbers belong to set A, which numbers belong to set B, and which numbers belong to both. Let's go on to number two. In the Venn diagram below, A, B, and C are subsets of a universal set, U, which is comprised of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we can see in the Venn diagram down here how those numbers have been placed. We can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. There they are. All right, let's do part A. We need to list the elements in each of the following sets. Let's begin with A union B. Here we're talking about all of the numbers that are in set A or set B, or both, of course. So let's list all of the numbers that are inside set A. So we've got now uh, 1, 3, 4, 8, and 9. And let's now list all of the numbers that are in set B. Well, B is including 3, 7, and 9. We've already written down the 3 and the 9, but I still need to add the 7. And I've done part A. Part B wants us to find the numbers that are in A intersection, B intersection, C. What this means is that we're looking for the numbers that are in A and B and C all at the same time. So if you look at your diagram, can you see any numbers that are inside the A circle, and they're inside the B circle, and they're inside the C circle? Is there any number inside all three circles? Yes, there is one, the 9. So that is the only element that belongs to all three of these sets A, B, C simultaneously. Part C. Now we're looking for numbers that are not inside set A, and at the same time, they are inside set C. Let's work that out first. What numbers are in, not in A, but are in C? So the numbers not in A are going to be all of the numbers outside the circle A. So let's only consider the numbers outside the circle A. We can see we've got 2, 7, and 6. Which of those numbers are in set C, because we're looking for numbers that are outside circle A, but inside circle C. We can see then that those are going to be two numbers, 6 and 7. So as I work on this problem, I'm first going to realize that this first part that I've got in parentheses, right here, A not intersection C, I realize that the only elements that fit that criteria are 6 and 7. Union set B. Set B I'm going to write out as the set of elements 3, 7, and 9. So these are all the things inside set B. And now I'm trying to figure out then, what are the elements that are inside 6, 7, or 3, 7, 9, or both? You know, the or situation just means that we're going to stick both sets together into one big set. We just make sure that we don't write down any repeated elements twice. And so we end up then with a final answer of 6, 7, 3, 7, 9. Oh, I already said the 7. So 6, 7, 3, 9. And I'll just put those into order from least to greatest. 3, 6, 7, 9. And so we, another way we can think about this 
Let me just read through it again. All of the numbers that are outside circle A and are in circle C or are in circle B. So we first realized that we were dealing with 2, 7, and 6 or 3, 9, 7. And so I ended up writing all four of those numbers down. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, I see. Sorry, I should have had only six or seven. I wrote it down correctly, even if I just said it wrong. And so, uh, yeah, we began the numbers outside set A, which are in set C, six and seven. And then we've got to combine that set with set B, which is three, nine, seven. And now we go six, seven, nine, three, or in order, three, six, seven, nine. And there is a part, uh, oh, there isn't a part D. We're done. Let's move on to number three. All right, here's a picture of a Venn diagram. I can see that my set A and my set B are overlapping, and set C is entirely within set B. All right, here we go. Are these statements true or false? Let's start with part A. A intersection C is equal to the empty set. Is this true? Is there anything inside set A and set C at the same time? No, there isn't. Set A and set C are disjoint. They do not overlap at all. That means that no matter where I put a number, it cannot be inside C and A at the same time. So the common elements between A and C, there are no common elements. Their overlapping region is empty, and so this is a true statement. Part B. Is it true that the union of C and B is the same thing as set C? So when I'm doing a union, one effective technique is just to shade both C and B. So let's shade C. There, that's everything inside set C. And now let's shade B. That's everything inside set B. And everything that's been shaded belongs to C or B. Is my shaded region, the one I've just created, is that the same thing as set C? No, definitely not. Set C is a lot smaller than what I've just shaded. So this is a false statement. Uh, part C. Is it true that C is a subset of A union B. All right, let's just erase what I just made. And A union B, the stuff that is inside A, there's A, or B, so let's shade B, because with an or, I just simply shade both. Is it true that set C is entirely contained within this shaded region A union B? Yes, it is true. And lastly, we want to determine, is A a subset of C naught? Okay, so, is A a subset of C naught? First, let's figure out what C naught is. I'm going to shade everything outside circle C. What I'm shading right now, this is C naught. Everything outside circle C. There we go, everything outside circle C. Is it true that our set A is entirely contained within this shaded region C naught that I just created? Yes. My shaded region is nearly everything, and it includes all of A. I did shade all of A as I shaded C naught, so A is entirely contained, and that is a true statement.